Today, I wanted to review the steps involved in a hearing aid fitting and why they are important. A hearing aid fitting appointment takes about 45 minutes. Before the fitting, the patient has already completed a communication needs assessment. A communication needs assessment appointment includes a comprehensive hearing test with a diagnosis of type and degree of hearing loss, as well as an extensive review and discussion of the patient's lifestyle and goals with hearing aid treatment. We have already reviewed the different styles of hearing aids with the patient, recommending a specific style based on the type and degree of hearing loss, the patient's dexterity or vision concerns, as well as the size and shape of the external ear canals. Most patients require two hearing aids, as most patients have hearing loss in both ears. There are occasions where patients only need one hearing aid. However, if there is hearing loss in both ears, there's a great deal of research proving the benefits of hearing with both ears, the way our brain is designed to process sound. There are many manufacturers of hearing aids. We have accounts with all the major ones to be able to keep up with all the latest technology. We will recommend a specific device to the patient's needs, using our experience of what devices provide the most success. Success with hearing aids in general has drastically improved over the years due to improved education, research, and technology. The fitting day would be when the patient gets to take home the devices. This is the start of improved quality of life, reducing risk of cognitive decline, depression, or social isolation. This is the start of reconnecting to loved ones. We are so thankful that we can be part of that journey. We know how tough it can be. Most patients are anxious, but excited to take this next step. We want them to feel comfortable knowing we are here for the whole process, providing support, resources, and education. The main differences between hearing aids programmed by a doctor of audiology and an over-the-counter product or amplifier is that the devices are fit specifically based on the patient's hearing loss to ensure that the patient is not getting too little or too much sound for certain pitches to make sure the devices are actually fit physically in the ear for comfort and security for daily use, and to calibrate the hearing aids based on the size and shape of the ear canal using real ear verification technology to ensure the patient has best access to sound and speech to better function in situations with background noise, such as group settings, church, restaurants, etc. We will walk you through each step in this video. Starting with the physical fit, the audiologist will examine the patient's ear canals. Some people have a small or narrow opening in the ear canal. Some people have a wide opening. Some people build up a lot of wax. Some people have very dry ears. There's a lot we consider in the anatomy and the external ear canal when fitting a device. There's hundreds of different tips or what we call domes or sleeves, but there are also custom ear molds made of acrylic or silicone. We choose a tip based on the size and shape of the ear canal, but also based on the severity of hearing loss. The differences in these tips is not just for security and comfort for daily use, which is important, but also to ensure that the patient is receiving the right amount of sound and noise reduction. There are types of tips that are more vented or what we call open for patients who have some residual good hearing so that it doesn't plug up their ear. This is one of the main differences from an audiologist picking out what the patient needs versus the patient trying to fit it themselves at home. That can be very difficult. Majority of patients are fit with behind the ear devices or what we call receiver in the canal, which requires a measurement of a wire length as well. There are about five different wire lengths to determine a secure fit. Some patients require different tips and wire lengths between the ears. We are all a little asymmetrical. After the physical fit of the hearing aids, next up is the calibration testing. The benefits of these tests include reducing the risk of microphone feedback or the whistling sound that hearing aids used to have and ensuring that the patient is receiving the right amount of amplification at each pitch or frequency based on the hearing test. The research shows that by performing these tests, patients are able to better follow conversations in the presence of background noise, such as group gatherings, church, restaurants, etc. Real ear verification testing is set up next. This test involves placement of a probe microphone in the ear, 
with the hearing aid to measure the output of the hearing aid in the patient's specific ear. Each ear is measured separately because most patients have a slight difference in the anatomy between ears, or some patients have a difference of hearing between ears as well. Following the calibration tests, it is now time to turn the devices on. We typically recommend a family member or a friend, a caregiver, someone to come with the patient so they have a familiar voice in the office when we initially turn on the hearing aids to test the difference and to make sure it's comfortable. Most hearing loss happens gradually over many years. So when we start with hearing aids, we set it at a noticeable but comfortable level for the patient. We counsel the patient on what to expect from the beginning. Hearing aids do not restore perfect, normal, natural hearing. So we review realistic expectations based on the severity of the loss or the length of hearing loss. Most patients are able to hear much better right away, but it just takes time to adjust to reintroducing sounds they may not have heard for a while or have not heard as loud or as clear as they used to. Following activation of the hearing aids, we then practice with the patient on how to take the devices out and how to properly put them in. This takes some practice at home as well in the first few days, depending on the patient's dexterity and vision. Majority of patients are able to place the devices with ease as they were fit by the audiologist specific to the patient's ears. We review basic cleaning and maintenance, but hearing aids do not require as much as they used to now that they have a higher water resistance and dust proof rating. We practice troubleshooting at the first follow-up appointment typically as well. If time allows, many hearing aids now have the capability of Bluetooth connection to smartphones as well as apps that can be used for adjustments. Our main goal is to help the patient hear better with the hearing aids alone. However, if the patient struggles to hear on the phone, Bluetooth can make a big difference, being able to hear a phone conversation to both ears through the hearing aids. Some phones are compatible and some are not, but we will check this for the patient and set it up if possible. Sometimes the utilization of the apps can be helpful through the adjustment process, if a patient needs to be able to manually turn the devices up or down. There is a volume control on the back of most hearing aids, so the app and Bluetooth is not necessary. However, the app provides an easier way to do this, specifically if the patient has dexterity issues. The goal is, however, after the adjustment process, that the hearing aids process sound automatically in different environments, and the patient should not have to think about turning them up and down during the day. We provide a packet of information for the patient to take home that details all that was reviewed and what to expect. One of our main goals in our clinic is to ensure that the patient is educated on the process, which will provide greater rates of success and long-term care. We spend a great amount of time to make sure all questions are answered, that the patient does not feel rushed, and that they are hearing great, leaving with confidence that this treatment will improve their quality of life. Most patients return in about two weeks for adjustments, fine tuning, and increase in volume closer to their prescription. Two people may have the same hearing loss, but are in different environments around different people and have different goals for treatment. So there are a lot of adjustments that the audiologist can make using advancements in technology as the patient goes through the adjustment process. Here's to hearing better.